right, we're live. All right, everybody. Welcome back to another phenomenal episode of The Blind Spot, where we talk with blind athletes, reaching excellence, as always, brought to you by the United States Association of Blind Athletes. Sorry we're coming to you uh, a couple minutes later than uh, we uh, broadcasted uh, out to the, the Facebook world. We had uh, just a couple of technical uh, difficulties we were working through, um, but we're all good now. Uh, excited to be here. Uh, you guys, hey, we, uh, you know, a- as always, we've got some exciting stuff um, being pushed out to uh, the USABA social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. YouTube. So keep an eye on everything. Um, you know, as always on, uh, tomorrow we're dropping, uh, the next episode of our USABA 45 for 45 series, um, you know, celebrating, um, our 45th anniversary, uh, in existence. USABA has been around for 45 years now, guys. Wow. Uh, and still cranking out and, uh, welcoming just awesome athletes in all the time. And I, guys, I am so excited to talk to our guest today, Miss Colleen Young, a two-time Paralympian in the sport of swimming. And I believe, Colleen, uh, this is uh, you are gunning for Paralympics number three in Tokyo this year. Is that correct? That is correct. Number three. That's the plan. Three. It's a magic number. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, Colleen and I, uh, we, we both actually live and train out of the Olympic and, and Paralympic Training Center uh, here. So uh, I, I think she's, uh, she's, doing me a, she's doing me a favor. She very graciously agreed to come on. <laughs> um, she was like, Kyle, you know, I, 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 you know it, if you know, anyone, if it was anyone else, I would uh, definitely – be doing it but because it's usa because it's usaba i definitely want to do it uh and it's it you know it's just a it's a shame that you're the host (laughs) absolutely no come on now (laughs) no no. thanks for having no awesome we're we're so so happy to have you so so colleen let's go ahead and just start right at the uh right at the top why don't you tell us you know a, a little bit about yourself like what what is your eye condition and you know what can and and can't you see yeah so um I was born with albinism which is a genetic condition that basically means that my body doesn't have the ability to produce any melanin so um for those of you watching that can see um that's why I have white hair I'm pale white eyebrows you know the whole the whole works Um, but that does affect my vision. Um, I am really, really light sensitive. Um, and so I can't see things very far away at all. Um, 2020 vision is like perfect vision. So with my glasses on, I, it gets corrected to about 2250. And then without my glasses, my right eye is about 2600. And then my left eye is about 2850. So, um, legally blind, not fully blind, but, um, yeah, that's, that's the basic, like, gist. Awesome. Awesome. So, so like, let's go ahead and, and talk about like, where, where did you, uh, you know, where did you grow up? Like, how did, uh, you know, how, did, and how did you, uh, find your way to swimming? Uh, Cause so you're, you know, you're, a, you're a swimmer and, uh, I, I believe, you know, we are visual classification places you in the, uh, SB 13, S 13, I think it is. And yeah. so, so tell us, tell us how, you know, growing up, how did you find your way to swimming? So growing up, I, I, I got to thank my parents for this and like my family, cause they always pushed me to do every single sport. Like growing up, I tried basketball. I played soccer for a couple of years. I did um, softball. I did, you know, sports that for blind people, usually not very good. Um, and I can confirm I was not very good at any of those. Um, but for a long while, my two sports that I played were golf and swimming. Um, huh. And swimming, I, I've been swimming for, um, I mean, a long time now, but 
Um, <laughs> I took lessons when I was a kid and I actually hated it. I remember one, there was one lesson and I just, I would not get in the pool. Like I did not want to be there. I was like crying. I was, you know, throwing the whole fit a five-year-old would throw. Um, and I remember my parents, like we left early and then the car ride home was just silent. And I was like, oof, they're definitely angry at me. <laughs> but, um, but from, you know, throwing a tantrum at that one swim practice, like I was forced to stick with it for a little while, but then I eventually just, I fell in love with the sport. Um, I swam on a club team back home, CSP Tide Riders. I swam with them through you know, middle school, through high school, all the way up until I went to college. Um, and they were, you know, so supportive of me. Like I had great friends, great coaches, great teammates, you know. Um, and it was just swimming itself. Like I, I love the sport, obviously, but the community in swimming is so good. And I think that's what made me stick with it for so long. So, I mean, that's so awesome. And, and like, I, I just, I feel so often that it is just the, the, the people around us that really make you know the sports that we do you know i mean because swimming i mean I, i'm a triathlete i spend a lot of time in the pool and it's and it's lonely in the pool uh, and you and you spend a lot more time in the pool than I, you guys swim like two to three times as, as much as as we do um and, and just that community out of the out of the water is is what makes it you know is what makes the suffering uh uh, of training worth it, I, I think. So it, it definitely sounds like that's the same for you. Yeah, for sure. And I think that that's like with any sport, I think like whether it's like an individual sport like swimming or like a team sport like like basketball or something, like mm -hmm. your teammates, like they become your second family. So just being able to like lean on them and having like a good group around you all the time just makes like- Yeah, so absolutely. So in that, in that same thread, uh, you know, we have these, you know, these great people around us, you know, from, from teammates to coaches, to parents, to, to friends and, re and relatives and, and training partners and all that. Uh, do you, do you have someone that has been just a, like a super big influence in your life? You know, that could be your, your sporting life or just your, your life in general. Like who, who would you say has been one of your bigger influences? Um, uh Honestly, and I know, I feel like my family watching, um, and when they watch this back, they're definitely going to be shocked, but honestly, my, um, cause I never say it, but my, my brother, I actually look up to him a lot. He has just, he, he's not a swimmer at all, but he mm -hmm. played golf in high school. And then he, um, like he graduated in three years from university of South Dakota and he like basically like he's a he's a he's a nurse now he lives in salt lake city but he has oh wow had a stable job like all throughout high school like he did so many different like things to find like what his passion was i don't any he, he just never like in my opinion like he just has never given up on like what he has wanted to do and i think that's something that you know uh, and he's not a swimmer obviously but mm -hmm. you know i can take lessons from him and be like okay well here's my goal for swimming like this is what I need to do to achieve that because that's what he did to achieve his and you know it kind of you know all all plays out oh absolutely no I I love hearing that because it, it, you know you're taking something from outside your outside your sport and, and you're applying you know the lessons you know the 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 influence of your of your brother and i mean i mean come on, i have i have three sisters How, you know you got an, you know i'm is it a older brother you said yeah older brother yeah older older brother so i mean i mean come on there's a little sibling rivalry there too oh, i mean and course, you know <laughs> you know but like it's it's all in in good fun like you, yeah. yeah i mean i i look up to i look up to all of my sisters and, right. you know i i love that i love that you uh that that you look up to look up to him like that and, and it and it and it bleeds over and it's and it's applicable to to your swimming career um that that's awesome yeah i definitely oh don't man <laughs> sorry go ahead oh no i was just saying i definitely don't tell him that enough but now he <laughs> <laughs> well 
it's uh, it's it's on social media now, so uh, you can't. So no take backs. <laughs> <laughs> no, lo- love it, love it. So you know, let so let's go ahead and dig into uh, let's dig into the into this training thing. Like we we've talked a lot about you know, you know, okay, swimming. Talk us through your your daily and your weekly training. How do, how does that look for for you? Yeah, so a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we'll have double swims. So we'll swim seven to nine in the morning and then three to five at night. Mm-hmm. And then Tuesday and Thursday, we'll just swim seven to nine in the morning. And then we'll have lift from 1030 to 12 ish basically whenever you get done but it's basically like 10 30 to 11 45 or 12 you know in that range um and then saturday we just have one practice and that's 7 30 to 9 and then we're off the rest of saturday off sunday thank god and then <laughs> back over on monday so it's really a lot but yep. i'm sure you can relate and you, you, have, three, you have three different um sports to kind of juggle i just have swimming (laughs) (laughs) no yeah no i mean you know and and i it is it is a i mean that's that's a that's a lot um you know i mean that's you know i mean so i'm I'm adding it up in my head you know it's you know four so i mean that i mean you're you're looking at you know 12 12 plus hours you know 12 you know probably 18 hours a week in the pool um Plus, you know, throw in a couple of gym sessions and all that. I mean, you know, I, I, I know how many, you know, how many meters I swim a week and <laughs> like, I, you know, and I swim ha- and I only swim five days a week. Um, so I, I, and, and you swim a lot faster than I do. I will, <laughs> uh, I will say that. So like, I, 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 you know, we have mad respect for, uh, the amount of, uh, the amount of work that you guys do, but, you know. I mean, obviously here at the training center, like we can, like we can focus so much on just giving it everything we got. What, how did, how did you come to decide to move to the training center? Uh, what was, uh, what was the decision making process like for, for you? And, uh, you know, how did, how, and when did you get the opportunity? Yeah. So I actually graduated college last May. Um, Mm -hmm. and I swam there. I swam at Fairfield University all four years. Um, And when I graduated, I had kind of already planned to maybe be out here for the summer leading up to Tokyo, you know, before COVID happened. Mm -hmm. Um, But then when COVID happened, you know, everything got shut down. So I was in St. Louis for a couple months. um, And I didn't really do anything at all for about Mm -hmm. two months. Um, Mm -hmm. And so when the training center finally opened I was like okay well I was gonna go here anyway um Mm -hmm. and now like I'm able to have this consistent training you know and at at that point Tokyo was still scheduled to go on for 2020 so I was like okay well I guess I gotta get back in gear (laughs) like yep go um but you know the consistent training especially with everything going on like pandemic wise was a huge factor um that and then it's long course out here which is mm-hmm. definitely good because we race long course yeah uh, and then i i've actually i have a lot of family out in colorado my dad's side is all based in pueblo so oh. actually, yeah we used to take family vacations out here all the time so i actually love colorado um and so definitely like just colorado in general like the scenery and all that stuff like i love the mountains and the snow and you know, all that stuff. But, um, I guess those three were definitely the main factors coming out here, but awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so, all right. We, we mentioned it at the top of the show, two time Paralympian, you're going for your games number three. Yeah. Uh, but first, first Paralympics was, was London 2012, correct? Yeah. So, and uh, and you and you just mentioned that you just graduated college <laughs> last May, so for for those you know, let I want you to go ahead and just tell uh, tell the audience 
how old were you when you made your first Paralympic team? Um, when I actually made the team, I was 13. And then when I actually went to London, I was 14. Yeah, that is, uh, <laughs> that's pretty impressive. <laughs> so talk, talk to us about, talk to us about competing in London as a 14 year old. Like what was that first games experience like? Um, honestly, this is going to sound so bad, but it's been so long that uh-huh. it's hard to remember like specifics, but mm-hmm. I remember being like looking back on myself now in London, I was so naive. Like I didn't know what was going on. I was there and I was like, this is really cool. I was, I was like, I'm a par- like, I'm a Paralympian. And I don't think at that time I realized like the magnitude of that word Paralympian or like yep. significant, like, like, dude, I'm here, like in yep. like, eating with the best in the world. Like, I don't think my brain even like processed that. Um, but you know, it was definitely such a good experience. You know, I had, I, and that trip is where I met, you know, some of my best friends, like it, I was the youngest, but there was a group of us who were, mm-hmm. you know, 16, 17 years old. And we all formed such a close bond on that trip because we were so young. And so, um, I like to this day, I have some of my best friends I've made were from that London trip. So, uh, just really incredible being, being able to go at such a young age, but uh, that's so awesome. But then, and, and then it was on to Rio where, uh, where you had, uh, you had some successes as well. Um, and, and now on to, uh, on to Tokyo. So what is, what's the, uh, what's the process for, for you? um, for, for swimming and qualifying, uh, like talk us through the, the process of how, how are you going to make it there? So because of COVID, they kind of did qualify, uh, ugh, can't talk because of <laughs> kind of did qualifying a different way, uh, this mm-hmm. year. So okay. our meet last month we had in Louisville was kind of like part one of our trials. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we have our actual like team trials coming up in Minneapolis this next month in June. Um, but basically they, they'll take times from both of those meets and kind of compare it to the rest of the world. So um, for example, so I went a 115 of my hundred breaststroke in Louisville. Um, even so, even if I go like 119 at team trials, like they'll take that 115 from Louisville. So it's kind of, uh. Yeah. Gotcha. 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 Do you have a favorite, um, do you have a favorite, uh, stroke or, you know, is there a stroke that is your, that is your best? Yeah. Breaststroke by far, but I do, I really like, um, I do some, the 200 individual medley too. So I really like okay. all the strokes, but breaststroke is my breaststroke's my one, you know, my OG. <laughs> yep. 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 For sure. For sure. So, I mean, gosh, you've, you've been, competing at this, you know, at this level, you're, you know, you're 22, 23 years old. You, you know, went to your first Paralympics at, you know, 14, uh, you know, you, you've pulled down all these, these medals and, you know, records and uh, all this stuff. What, you know, what is, what would you say is your biggest success or, you know, what is, what does success just in general mean to you? Success, honestly. And I know like, obviously I care about medals. Like, obviously mm-hmm. I want to win, you know, gold in Tokyo. That's obvious. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the big, you know, goal. Um, but honestly setting a goal for yourself and doing everything you can to achieve that goal is such a huge thing that I think is overlooked a lot by like records and medals and yep. all that stuff. But if I like set a goal, so Um, if I set like a time that I want to go and I hit that time, but it might mean like missing placing fourth or something like it's still so important to feel proud of that because you know that, you know, you hit that goal and it's a personal best time. And like, you gave it your all and all that stuff, I think is huge to success. That is, that's take note of that guys. That's, you know, that, that comes from experience talking (laughs) that that comes from experience, but, (laughs) but, you know, we, you know, we, we talk about success so much and, and, and I think one of the, you know, 
you know, one of the things that I, I love asking people about though, is like, look, in order to have one success, we have to have tons, tons of failures. So talk, talk us through just a little bit about how, like, when you fail to hit a goal or, or you have setbacks, how do you, how do you bounce back from it? How do you, you know, how do you get over, you know, how do you get over that hump of, you know, a uh, failure? Um, that's honestly, and it's, it's so good that you brought that up because it's such an important thing. Like athletes, like we're, we're deemed successful by our successes. Right. Mm-hmm. So when we're expected to, you know, do so well at these meets and it doesn't go our way, then everyone is like, oh, like they're a terrible athlete. Like they're, they're a failure. And you know, that's, that is hard to get over. And I honestly, I started talking to a sports psychologist probably about a year ago. And I don't know how I did swimming (laughs) like at such a high level without her. Um, I, the way I used to view failure was like, that's it. Like I failed, like there's nothing, like it would eat away at me and like I yep. over it and you know, you dwell on it and you dread on it. Um, but that's not a healthy thing to do. So you want to be able to look at failures and take note and be, you know, okay, what did I do wrong? What can I do better? What can I improve from this? You know, and be able to, you know, educate yourself from your failures so that you yep. can go you have successes. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. So, so one of the things that, that we do and, you know, you know, on, uh, on, you know, after every practice or every race or, or competition or anything, like, like we'll, we'll get together and, you know, we break it down. Like, look, uh, we, we basically do a, we call it an after action report and it's just, uh, what went well? what went wrong? What can we improve? And, uh, it sounds like you go through just a, a little bit of a similar process. Yeah. And that, that's, it's such an important thing to do because it's so good to be able to reflect on your practice or reflect on your race or, you know, reflect on anything in your career and be able to learn. From that. Absolutely. Do you have a, um, do you have a favorite like race or competition memory that kind of just sticks out? Like, was there, was there run, one, you know, one meet where just everything kind of came together and you know that's you know or or is there one that stands out where it was so horrible and like you're like i never want to experience that again like like, i mean or do you have one of each (laughs) Um, my my favorite story is definitely um we so there's a there's a meet in berlin that i've gone to a lot okay Usually when I'm there, I'll swim the 200 breaststroke because it's not that event is an a Paralympic event, but they offer it at that meet. So I'm like, oh. I love the two breasts. Like, let's go. Um, and I actually broke my, the, the, so that's the event I have my world record in, but the okay. first time I broke it 2015 um, was definitely such a, such a meet. Um, I remember I like almost missed that race because I was like not paying attention and and I like I don't know they like announced something and I was like oh I still have time I did not have time I like <laughs> I was like oh my gosh like I have to go um, but I think you know that adrenaline really helped because I was able oh, to yeah. break that world record um that's definitely memorable a memorable wow what uh, just I mean just out of curiosity what is uh you know what is your what's your time for that 200 breaststroke right now? Um, 242, 243. Oh my God. I, uh, I, um, <laughs> I, I, just, just I, guys, just to let you know, that's fast. <laughs> for those of you that may not know, sorry, that's fast. Um, so I, I, just to, just for comparison, guys, I swam an all out 200 freestyle, which is supposed to be one of the faster strokes. And, uh, I, 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 I did my personal best on Tuesday this week and I only swam two minutes and 54 seconds. So, <laughs> so Colleen's going out there and, and kicking my butt, you know, breaststroking. Um, so, uh, I, I, uh, 
so, so Colleen, when are we going to take uh, when are we going to take those swimming skills and uh, bring you over to the dark side of triathlon? Huh? <laughs> Honestly, you know what, Kyle, I, I may be beating you in swimming, but I can guarantee running. You have me beat. I cannot run to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> We could, we could teach you. We could teach you. We can work out that. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I love it. Um, so let's go ahead and just, uh, let's do a few fun, fun little questions. Um, you know, these are just, you know, fun. Try to get to know you a little bit, a little bit more lighthearted stuff. Um, so what's your, uh, what's your favorite, like post, you know, post meet or post training treat? Post training treat. Um, I love. Okay, I don't know if this. I'll do post meat. So yeah, I, let's do that. <laughs> sounds good. Um, I love nachos. I Ooh. I will literally any restaurant that has nachos, like I'll order nachos. And I know it's not good for you, but like post meat, like for sure, I'm ordering a plate of nachos. Oh come on! A anything is fair game after a, after a big meat. What do you What do you like on your nachos? Oh, I'll take anything on them. Any, I like, anything. A lot of people don't like jalapenos, but I love jalapenos. Oh, gotta have the jalapenos on there. Come on. It's not nachos without the jalapenos. Exactly. <laughs> love it. You no, know, just a little kick. <laughs> I love it. What's your favorite uh, like music or, or band? Um, Currently, Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow? You know who Jack Harlow oh, I I. I don't know, um, but uh, educate me. Yeah, he's a rapper. He's coming up. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Got a little, got a little mean streets of St. Louis in you. Oh, of course. <laughs> Come on, got a little. Yeah. Love it, love it. You a dog or a cat person? Um, both. Both. Okay. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see you eyeing my I see you eyeing my dog on on deck. <laughs> <laughs> coffee or tea? Um, coffee, but it has to be uh, coffee. Definitely, it has to. Iced it has coffee. to be what? It has to be iced coffee. Oh, iced coffee. Okay, okay. All right, all right. You like a good cold brew? Okay, good stuff. Chocolate or vanilla? Honestly, I might get some backlash for this, but vanilla. Hey, hey, the, I know uh, it depends for me. I'll be honest. It depends for me. Like, uh, you know, I don't know if you indulge in the, in the core power uh, shakes that we have, but I like the vanilla yeah, uh, I always, here at the training center more than the chocolate. So yeah, a hundred percent. Sometimes, sometimes chocolate is just too rich, you know? Yeah. So, sometimes, but, uh, but don't get me wrong. I mean, I'll take a good, I'll take a really good piece of chocolate or a chocolate cake or anything like that any any day of the week. But I mean, so for me, I, I'm like flip a coin. <laughs> All right. Are you a uh are you do you like to are you a stay up late kind of gal or are you uh let's get up and get going? Um I'm definitely stay up late. <laughs> uh, you're young. <laughs> um, my, my average bedtime is probably like 10 30 11 yeah for for some people that's still early for me that's late <laughs> i'm in bed by like nine o'clock <laughs> my um my roommate is actually the complete opposite of me she's up and going by like 6 a.m yep. like, together and i'm like pressing the snooze button i'm like i <laughs> like love it love it sparkling or plain water plain plain like sparkling like flavored water okay like sparkling like water in general oh no <laughs> gotcha gotcha uh so do you have a favorite non-swimming activity like what do you do when you uh when you just don't you know and swimming is off the table what's your favorite thing to do um I actually just started recently. I used to read like all the time when I was a kid. And then when mm -hmm. I got to high school, I stopped because I was like mm -hmm. forced to read books. And I was like, this is. <laughs> um, but no, I just recently started getting into reading again. So I, I'd have to say reading books. Awesome. I love it. Well, I have a great book that you should uh, 
uh, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. No, I, I could definitely give you some uh, some great recommendations, but uh, you probably saw on my on my social media that I, I just released my book. So I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, just a shameless plug for myself. But no, no, I was just 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 messing. Uh, and and you know, and, and Colleen, let's uh, like just real quick before we get to our our fan questions, um, I want to you know just give you an, a, a quick opportunity. Uh, are there any like just special, you know, special shout outs to, you know, sponsors or, or, you know, big time supporters of yours? Like you just, you have any special uh, shout outs that you want to give to people or thanks at all? Um, I don't really have any sponsors, but um, shout out to Bridget Young. That's my mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, shout out to Kyle Young, who is my brother. That I love. <laughs> so. so awesome. Love I gotta, it. I got to plug the family. Absolutely. Now, always, I'm always giving shout outs to the, to the family because family, you know, family's always there for you. Um, and, and then let's go ahead and, uh, Bill, our, uh, fearless producer, what kind of, uh, questions are people dropping in the, uh, in the comments below? Yeah. Well, Brian wants to know, and I don't know if this is a follow-up to the lightning round or the nacho question, but Applebee's or Chili's? Is that Brian Waffler? Yes. <laughs> um, honestly, I Applebee's are um, I would say Chili's. You know, Chili's is the OG. Um, that is a running joke between we, me and one of my best friends. Uh, we go to Applebee's and Chili's a lot, but uh, gotta pick Chili's. You know. <laughs> All right. And then oh. the other question we got was from Jennifer. She noticed that uh, one of your hobbies you list in your bio is golf. Do you still golf? Um, no, I wish I did. I need to get back into it. Yeah. If we, if we had more time, I, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I mean, honestly, Colin, we could do a whole thing on, on golf. Cause I I'm, that's fascinating to me, uh, you know, about, you know, how you uh you know how you were golfing and what got you into it and and all that but man like i yeah because uh we got a few we got a few we got a few courses around the around the springs i'm surprised you haven't uh dabbled (laughs) i know i'm just well the weather's starting to get nice you know maybe i'll i don't have any clubs out here Uh, someone come with me because i can't see the ball i'm I'm sure we could find you we could find a set of clubs somewhere I, I, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I'd give it a, I'd give it a whirl, but uh, just uh, heads up, every, anybody who wants to uh, <laughs> golf with me, because uh, I don't know, I haven't swung a golf club in uh, probably fifteen years. <laughs> so it's been about like four. So buyer beware. I, I guarantee, I guarantee you, Colleen's a much better golfer than I am. I've never <laughs> taken a lesson in my life. <laughs> uh, any other questions from the uh, from the fans, Bill? That was it from the fans, but I, I do have one question uh, to see how many mascots she can name from the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. Oh, no. Ooh. <laughs> on the spot, Colleen. Come on. <laughs> Got to go, go with Fairfield, you know. Stags, Stags up. Um, Marist, you got Red Fox. Uh, Niagara, Purple Eagles. Oh, my God, I just... Sienna, Saints, um, Iona Gales, um, Canisius Griffins, and I, I know the other schools, but I don't know their mascots, and I'm drawing a blank, which is bad. If y'all don't know, Fairfield is in the MAC conference. That That's why he asked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and say that's uh... – I think you named, I think you rattled off five or six. That's five or six more than I would have gotten. <laughs> so kudos to you. Kudos to you. All right, Colleen, I actually have one more question and it's something that I, I like to ask everybody that I have on. Um, okay. And uh, it, 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 the question is, how do you, Colleen Young, how do you want to be remembered? Oh, wow, Kyle. We just went from fun to deep. 
So <laughs> um, I want to be remembered as someone who is a great teammate, who is an advocate, and who is unapologetically themselves. That's the mic drop, y'all, because yeah. that—that's the kind of stuff that that we're that we're here for. Because um, it's all about, you know, whether look anybody, everybody out there listening, whether whether you're, you know, two times soon to be three time Paralympian like Colleen Young, or you know, some schmuck like you know, like Kyle Kuhn over here, or uh, you know, Mr. Producer Extraordinaire, you know, Bill Kellick or you know a- anybody out there um it's all about just being yourself and you know leaving leaving as good a legacy uh as you can so colleen thank you so very much for being our guest today on the blind spot um uh, you know we our, our tagline here is you know where we talk with blind athletes reaching excellence uh you are certainly one of those blind athletes that you know, has reached excellence and you're, you're going places that, you know, that a lot of us can, can only dream of, but making dreams reality. And, uh, just thank you so much for your time and, uh, go enjoy the, the rest of the, the day off. And, and, uh, yeah, well, I'll probably see you down in the dining hall here before too long. <laughs> No, thank you you so much for having me on. This has been a blast. Awesome. All right, you guys, we have come to the end of another blind spot. Thanks so much again to our guest, Colleen Young. Uh, Colleen, real quick, actually, why don't you uh, let people know, how can we follow you on on social media? How can we keep up with your journey? Oh, of course. Um, You can follow me on Instagram at Coroyo, which is C O R O Y O. And then my Twitter is at underscore C R Y O U N G. Awesome. And we'll drop that in the, uh, we'll drop that in the comments as well. So you guys can uh, click on those and, and give Colleen a follow. But as always, guys, it's been a blast. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. And we will be back with another guest in a couple of weeks. Uh, as always, Remember to keep an eye on the USABA Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages, uh, all of our social media channels. We're constantly dropping uh, new stuff, pushing out new material. Uh, take a chance to hop over to usaba.org, sign up for our newsletter, uh, sending out newsletters you know, a couple times a month, giving everybody the latest and greatest in the world of blind and visually impaired sports. And... Uh, yeah, it's always, always a fun time here on the blind spot. So mark your calendars. We'll be pushing out probably later next week. Uh, we'll let you guys know who we've got coming up. But as always, thanks again to our guest, Colleen Young. Thanks you, as always, to my phenomenal producer, Mr. Bill Kellick. And uh, thank you guys, you, our fans, for tuning in and uh, listening to me prattle on and on and on. You guys take care and always, always go after what you want. Let's do it, guys. Take care.